newlydanish.com. Four, three, two, one. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! All right. FAQs part two. Straight into it. All right, so this is um, FAQs part two, frequently asked questions. So you must know the answer to every single one of these questions, okay? An FAQ is a question that has shown up in more than one test since 2009. So these are the questions that have the highest probability of showing up in the next test. Last Kahoot, what, today is Sunday, so on Wednesday, it was a mock test, you know, and I put that there to test, to kind of stretch you guys, I mentioned in the thing. Not a lot of you did well. I hope that was a wake-up call, and I hope that um, you guys have gone and, been, and, and have been practicing hard on the site. Today is an FAQ, so it's a little bit easier if you have been practicing, but if you haven't been practicing, then it will be hard for you. But I'm hoping that um, the numbers will be looking like this the whole night. Let's see. Round of applause to you guys. Okay, well done, well done. Great job. You've seen that question before. All right, so this question is about um, Christian IV and uh, his contributions to architecture. He built Runtorn Bursen that burnt down earlier this year and, um, well, a whole bunch of other buildings. This is a frequently asked question. So how many people got this wrong? 39 people got this wrong. Please fix this. It will appear on your profile. You must know the answer to that question. Next one. All right, so I'm going to talk about this. So in Denmark, the way the minimum wage... Oh, let me state it. Denmark doesn't have a minimum wage um, like other countries, like, say, for instance, the UK. So the minimum wage in the UK is, um, is actually set by the government. In Denmark, we don't have that. But the minimum wage is, de um, is decided um, by collective bargaining between FH, Fowl Bevelsen's whole organization, and DA, so Dansk Arbeidsgeoners, organization and um there are sub organizations in those organizations and there's different um collective bargaining sessions held in different sectors and that's how the minimum wage is decided so in this case they're asking whose interest does fh represent within the context of the collective bargaining and um, unless you actually, um, unless you know about the context of co collective bargaining, this question will throw you off. And I can see that, uh, you know, it threw over 60 people off. So now you know what you don't know. Hopefully the explanation I gave made some sense, but <clears throat> it will appear in your profile. Fix that. All right. Um, next one. Okay, I'll 
Only 26 people got this wrong. So Styles Bundle is from 1733, ended in 1788, lasted 55 years, and it was created by the king at the time. And he struck a deal with the rich land owners to secure cheap labor for them for at least 40 years. Okay. Um, not too bad. You guys did well here. Round of applause. <laughs> Uh, however, this was a combo breaker. Six players dropped their answer streak of three. Sorry, guys. Next one. Okay, so only 17 people got this wrong. So this is the beginning of World War II when, Den um, when Denmark was invaded by Germany. And unlike other countries where Germany basically took over those countries and overthrew the government, Germany did something a bit different in Denmark and demanded that the Danish government works in partnership with the Nazis. And of course, Denmark had no choice and they had to do that. However, that partnership ended in 1943. That is also a frequently asked question. Maybe you'll see it in this session. All right, we have Muhammad Ahmed, Simona Ice, C3PO, and Tao Ting. And Tara is the highest climber up 14 places. Excellent. We still have about 45 questions to go. Yes, so 12 people got this wrong. Now you know what you don't know. Get it right next time. It will show up on your profile, so fix that later. All right, Muhammad is out. Simona back at number one. Lucas is the highest climber up 12 places. Great job. All right, majority of you got this right. So this is about the responsibilities of the region. So they could ask about responsibilities of the region, the state or the commune. There is a section in the book that talks about that. So please make a list of those responsibilities because they could ask questions about any of them. All right, Cassie is making a comeback with three in a row. Excellent. Someone said 1760. Okay, so the Reformation happened in the 1500s. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, I guess there's not much else to say about this, but, you know, 43 people got this wrong, so this is a definite weak spot. It will show up again. They're probably going to see that question again, so at least... Now you know what you don't know. A player just has an answer streak of six. Hopefully you all get this right. All right. 
right. A majority of you got this right. The second biggest city in Denmark is Aarhus. <laughs> Someone said Copenhagen. <clears throat> Anyways, 11 people got this wrong. Fix it, please. It will show up on your profile. Next one. <clears throat> So, 42 people got this wrong. So, in the 1970s, it was, um, well, there was a lot of uh, grassroots movements. And one of them was um, the protest against nuclear weapons and nuclear energy in general. All right. 100 people got this right. So, it's a nice round number. Great job. 42 people got it wrong. Fix that. We'll show up on your profile. So it's a slight reshuffle of the top five. Simona EIS at number two. Simona at number one, EIS at number two. Ugman at three, KK4 and Zab at five. Green Ocean is the highest climber up 14 places. Great job. Next one. You know the answer to this. Hopefully you get 100% here. Let's see. So you have to be at least 13 before you start working outside the home in Denmark, not 15. 15 is when um, you get you get prosecuted as, as an adult if you commit a crime. All right, next one. Yes. So um, a Falketing election has to ha happen within four years of the previous one. However, the prime minister can choose to call an election um, any time before that four years runs out. And actually, that's what happened in the last elections. 29 people got this wrong. Get it right next time. There's a lot of movement in this top five. Um, a lot of activity. So that's actually, I like seeing that. Four players have reached an answer streak of eight. Excellent. Yes, so there is no death penalty in Denmark. So there is no crime that is punishable by death in Denmark. All right. Uh, 13 people got that wrong. Milad is back in the top five. We've seen this before. Right, so 1972, there was a referendum on joining the EU, back then called EF. And in 1973, so yeah, there was a, there was a small majority, yes. And um, 1973, Denmark joined the um, EF. 
12 people got that wrong. Yenzement is in the top five now. There's some new names in this top five. Actually, that's nice. Some new blood. We've talked about this a whole bunch of times. If you've been coming to the Cahoots, you've, you've heard me mention this quite a few times. All right, so Tolvald Stowning was the first social democratic prime minister. He was elected in 1924. And that same year, he appointed the first female minister, Nina Bang, and she was um, Una Wiesnick's minister. So 26 people got this wrong. Next time this question pops up, I hope nobody gets it wrong. All right, next one. Okay, we have a static top five for the first time. Static top five. MH is back three in a row. Oh my! He's on fire! Next one. Right, so every law proposal is debated at least three times before there's a vote on whether it is approved or rejected. 36 people got this wrong. Get it right next time. Next one. Yeah, the answer to this was actually in one of the previous questions today. So let's see who was paying attention. All right, round of applause. So you guys are doing really well today. Um, this is a... Big contrast from uh, the mock test on Wednesday. Well done. Great job. Um, on the 9th of April, 1940, that was the date that uh, the Nazis invaded Denmark. 14 people got this wrong. Please get it right next time. It will show up on your profile so you can fix that. Um, Zab is back with an answer streak of three. Great job. Actually, quite surprised a lot of people got this wrong. So in Denmark, um, you're not obligated to vote. However, majority of registered voters actually vote. So in uh, the Folketing election, there's about 80 to 90% turnout. But uh, you're not obligated to vote. So um, 52 people got this wrong. Now you know what you don't know. Fix that. Next one. So the Socialist People's Party was created in 1959, and it was a spin-off from the Communist People's Party. I think this was because uh, something was happening in Hungary. I can't remember. Anyways, um, 23 people got this wrong. Fix it. Next one. Static top five. Static top five. Fish is back with an answer streak of three. Oh my! He's on fire! Question number 20 now. So 
So, um, yeah. I think, I can't remember exactly what date this was, but sometime in the 1600s, and there was a war between Denmark and Sweden. Denmark lost that war. Um, and had to give up some territory. So it was Skorno, Halland, Blacking, and some Norwegian uh, territory as well. I'm forgetting to say something here. But anyways, maybe it will come back to me later. Next one. We're getting to the halfway point. Yes, so focus colon is free. Um, this is an FAQ and, uh, well, majority of you have actually seen this before, except just three people, but this is a really good, um, result. So a round of applause. <laughs> this is, uh, the closest we've gotten to a perfect score tonight. So well done guys. Great job. You guys are doing way better than Wednesday. <laughs> Maximus is back with an answer streak of three. Excellent. Next one. Talked about this before. So the power to to judge on criminal cases and you know all kinds of different cases, not just criminal civil cases as well, um, lies with the courts. So power is split three ways in Denmark, as in most countries, executive, legislative, and judiciary. All right, on to the next one. Static top five. Static top five. Simona, Ice, Yenzeman, KK, and C3 Po. Amna is making a comeback with three in a row. Great job. Next one. Almost at the halfway point. Please, everyone, get this right. This should be a no brainer by now. Gunlon, okay? So Gunlon is from 1849, signed by Frederick VII. So for everyone that got this wrong... Now you know what you don't know. Please get it right. This is uh, one of the most um, important dates in Denmark's history. And you're probably going to see this question in the next test. So please get it right next time. Next one. Okay, so Harold Blotund, um, wrote on the rune stones that he was the one that um, basically brought Christianity to Denmark. And that happened in the 900s. Um, majority of you got this right. 22 people got this wrong. And I'm guessing the people that answered this, did you understand the question? Anyways, read the question slowly. Uh, make sure you understand the question before you go ahead and answer. Next one. Five players lost their answer streak of five. 
but we still have a static top five. Static top five. We are at the halfway point now. Yeah, okay. Hopefully you all get this right. <laughs> Let's see. So this question and the previous question were actually the same, but asked in a different way. Um, like I said, Corn Loan is from 1849, okay? Five people got this wrong. Please get it right next time. Hopefully it's not the same five people that failed the previous one. We're past the halfway point now. So, yes, under World War I, Denmark was neutral. Not much else to say about that. Next one. So there's no limits to the number of times um, a politician can be elected to parliament as long as he can keep on convincing people to vote for him or her. Next one. The legal age in Denmark is 18. If you got that wrong. Now you know what you don't know. Fix that. Four players reached an answer streak of 25. Excellent. This should be simple. That's minister. Three people got this wrong. Fix it. It will show up on your profile. All right. Um, question number 30. So um, basically any member of the public can uh, go and observe any of the meetings happening at, in the parliament. And uh, this is the freedom of information. However, you're not allowed to say anything when you're there. You can just observe. 19 people got this wrong. Get it right next time. You guys are doing really well. Round of applause. Aggie 45 is back with an answer streak of three. Great job. We've got 20 questions to go. You've seen this already today. Just asked in a slightly different way. Mm -hmm. 
the regions. Uh, this question was actually one of the earlier questions today. Next one. I think less people got it wrong this time, so well done. We have a static top five. Still. <laughs> Who said night? Anyways, this is uh it's almost structured like a Danish values question. Um so regardless of your religion, uh, so in Denmark, you have freedom of religion. However, regardless of your religion, you still need to respect the law in Denmark, obey the law. And if you break the law, you committed a crime. So you could actually go to jail. 12 people got this wrong. Get it right next time. So NATO is an international defense alliance between um, the USA and a bunch of other countries. I can't remember the number of people, the number of countries that are actually in NATO. Denmark is in NATO. Denmark joined in 1949. Um, only three people got this wrong. So well done to you guys. Next one. Yes, so Jan Utsun is um, the architect that designed the opera, the Sydney Opera House um, in Australia. FAQ, 21 people got this wrong. 123 people got it right. Next one. You saw this in the previous cahoots on Wednesday. This is a, I guess this one is a tough one, eh? Um, 54 people got this wrong. I'll do an explanation. So um, after an election, um, some requirements need to be fulfilled before a government is created. One of the major requirements is that any government that is created must not have a majority against it in parliament. And this is the reason why... Um, most governments in Denmark have been minority governments. So coalition. So it's a government where, you know, one party partners with like two, three others. And um, then they create the government. And then they also have um, support parties in parliament so that they can pass laws. I don't know if that made any sense. Um, yeah, that's what this is about. As you can tell, this is, also a frequently asked question, so you're probably going to see it again at some point, and it has a high probability of showing up on the next test. On to the next one.
So there isn't a definite number of ministers that need to be appointed in each government. Um, the prime minister can choose to appoint however many ministers he or she wants. On to the next one. And a minister can actually lead more than one ministry. There's, there's ministers that lead up to three ministries, actually. Anyways, next one. All right, so only 17 people got this wrong. Now you know what you don't know. So the government is usually um, the ones that uh, propose laws and the parliament debates and either accepts or rejects those laws. On to the next one. Yenzerman has been consistently climbing. This guy has been putting in work. Yenzerman, I think I've seen him in top five of, I think, almost all the cahoots so far. Round of applause to you, man. Ibram is back in the game with three in a row. Oh my! He's on fire! Next one. You know the answer to this. You've seen this before. Right. Eight people got this wrong. Please get it right next time. Static top five. Four players reached an answer streak of 11. <laughs> next one. Yep. Karen Blixen, The African Farm, Chapter 5, Literature. Next one. You just saw this as well. Same question asked in a slightly different way. Still, some people mess this one up as well. Okay, 11 people got it wrong. Um, well, I don't know what to say. Fix it next time. Evie is back in the game. We've got 10 questions to go um, just before we move on. If you're here for the first time and you don't have a profile on the website, your profile will be automatically created for you. Um, just check on the website within about half an hour to an hour of the session ending. And the way you can find your profile, just watch this video and um, it will tell you how to actually find your profile. And on your profile, you'll be able to, you know, practice, track your progress, figure out what you don't know, fix it. You know, all your all the questions that you got wrong um, tonight will show up on your profile and you can fix them. There's also a leaderboard and so on and so forth. So I've gamified the whole whole experience. Have a look at that video and figure it out. Next one. Yes, why are there 50 questions today? Because it's FAQ. So these are frequently asked questions. So this is not a, a mock test. In a mock test, you have the 45 questions.
Damn. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is definitely a weak spot, man. I wasn't expecting this. Anyways. So. Actually, I think, let me see. They had, which test was it that... Um, I think they're beginning to ask about specific individuals more and more. So on the website, I created a whole section about the people in the book. Okay. And they're split by chapter. In chapter one, Paul Schluter is mentioned. You can see all the people from Angantour to, you know, up until recent times. And Paul Schluter is somewhere here. Let's see if I can find him. There he is. So he was prime minister from 1982 to 1993, and he was in the Conservative People's Party. So make sure you have a look at this section of uh, the website and familiar familiarize yourself with these folks because they could ask about any one of them. Okay, moving on. This is a definite weak spot for you guys. Now you know what you don't know. And yes, um, he was the only... Um, Prime Minister from the Conservative People's Party so far. Okay, moving on. Yenzeman back at number one yet again. Simona fell to number three. Ice up at number two. Tala Milad at four and five. Rookie is back in the game three in a row. Oh my! He's on fire! Okay, we've got nine questions to go. Second half of the 1800s. Um, and Elizabeth Elson. I think I've explained this before. 36 people got this wrong. Get it right next time. Next one. Who fell out? Can't remember. Uh, Mohammed Ahmed is making a comeback with three in a row. Excellent. Next one. So after World War II, there was a lot of uh, destruction, as you can imagine, in Europe. A lot of uh, countries were, the infrastructure was completely destroyed. So um, the Marshall Plan was an economic plan to help some European countries um, rebuild their infrastructure. And that plan was named after, one, I think, what's his name? He's a general. He's mentioned in Chapter 1. He's mentioned somewhere here. Let me see if I can find him. There he is, George Marshall. And he was the U.S. Secretary of State who initiated the Marshall Plan, providing economic aid to Western European countries, including Denmark, for post-World War II reconstruction. So that's what that question is about. Next one. Static top five. Static top five. So, um, judges must not have any kind of uh, religious symbols because they're supposed to be unbiased when they are judging cases. So religious symbols are not allowed to be worn by any judge in a court of law in Denmark. 
Um, 11 people got this wrong. Please get it right next time. Someone fell out and KK is now at number five. Mickey is back with an answer streak of three. Almost at the end now. Okay, 1864. Um, Denmark lost the second Schleswig War. So there's two Schleswig Wars. The first one happened in, I can't remember. Second one happened in 1864. Denmark lost and they lost sooner you learned. I think I've talked about this a whole bunch of times. I think I haven't talked about this on the first Kahoot that we had on the 28th of August. This is a frequently asked question. So make sure you get this right the next time. 45 people got this wrong. Now you know what you don't know. Fix it, it will show up on your profile. Cassie, it's 1864, not 1849. Eighteen forty nine is gone long. Okay, so forty eight people have a weak spot here. So this is the reason why I say write a list of all the political parties that are currently in parliament. Um, for each one, pinpoint the leader, pinpoint the the year of creation. Also pinpoint the first, sorry, the year that they were first elected into parliament because they could ask questions like this. This question says, which of the following parties is the oldest? All right, 48 people got this wrong. Moving on. Okay, well done. Only five people got this wrong. For the five people? Now you know what you don't know. Fix it. It's the mom and dad. Teddy is now on the podium. No, actually, no. Teddy is in the top five, not on the podium. Tor is making a comeback with three in a row. Great job. We've got three questions to go. Amelian Boar. Static top five. Two questions and we're done. Please get it right. I talked about it already tonight. So it is the prime minister that calls the elections. The Falketing election. Um, 20 people got this wrong. Please get it right. Now you know what you don't know. Last question. Let's have a look at that podium. Simona made a comeback to number two. Yenderman holding number one. I said number three. Milad four and KK five. Three players reached an answer streak of five. Great job. So far, you guys have done really well in this session. Um, I didn't want to, you know, have two back-to-back -back sessions where people were not doing too well. So I hope this lifted your spirits. I hope um, this actually helps your confidence. Starting from 
Wednesday, we'll be going back to mock tests where I will be stretching you. Okay, so we will have these alternate versions where, you know, build up your confidence a bit, show you where you have your weak spots, keep going back and forth until you fix everything and you can have a good time on the test day. All right, last question. Okay, this is a weak spot for most people. So in Denmark, you have um, what's called a representative democracy. I mean, most democracies are representative democracies are supposed to be. So you vote um, someone, a member of parliament to parliament, and then he makes the decisions on your behalf. And that's all that means. Um, how many people got this wrong? That's 53 people got this wrong. So when you're in the test, Please read the question slowly, okay? Um, you have one minute per question. Read the question really slowly. Read the answer slowly. Make sure I understand the answers and then go ahead and answer, okay? So that's it for tonight. Let's have a look at that podium. Milad at number three. Simona at number two. And I think Yenzeman at number one. All right, so we have Ice and KK at number four and five. Let's see how everyone. NewlyDanish.com.